Posh okay. Spice. What? He's married to Posh Spice. He's the married Spice to Girl. Posh Spice. Yes, Victoria Beckham. Like, still? Yeah. <gasps> wow. Really? Well, now I'm looking up. There's, like, I haven't heard about them. So this is together anymore. <laughs> so this is weird. Um, uh, yeah, Je they've been married since '99. Unbelievable. So uh, Jesse, as you know, is the head of the Spice Girls YouTube channel, and I'm the head of the David Beckham YouTube channel, and we're doing this joint thing together. And we had, or I had no idea that David Beckham was married to Posh Spice, like none. I'm not going to admit how much I actually know about the Spice Girls. Have you seen Spice World? Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to mute myself. You do? Not, what? Sorry, not myself. We're I streaming. Need to mute you know that, right? Video. We're streaming. What? We're streaming. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I yeah, know okay. that because okay. that's what I have to mute is yeah. the YouTube video that I just mm -hmm. pulled up. So that mm -hmm. way I don't hear us coming back in my ear. Oh, that's too thin. 10 seconds after speaking. Mateus! Oh, how do you say Merry Christmas in Dutch? I only know German. <laughs> so, Mateus, you have to teach me how to say Merry Christmas in Dutch. How do you and, do Hey, Jasmine and Tim. How do you say it in German? I what, It's just escaping me. Weihnachten. Oh, Frühe uh, Weihnachten. Weihnachten. Yeah. So it's probably Ooh, something okay. like Weihnachten. <laughs> okay, Mateus, you're going to tell me how wrong this is. Fröhlich cursed faced. Hold on, I got this. Vrölich, 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 Gersfest. Gersfest. Yeah, I think yours sounded better than mine then. Yeah, how does that, how does that uh, diphthong sound when it's not stressed? <gasps> oh, okay, oh, right, sorry. Like, we got totally distracted by Posh Spice. So. I have to show you this uh, sweater I am wearing because my friend gave it to me and she is here right now in the comments. Check out this Yay. handsome little devil. Um, Very handsome. So my, my friend Don gave this to me and I actually, I have a party that I go to every year that I would be really excited to wear this at, but of course there are no parties this year. And so I was bummed out and I was thinking, well, it'll still be good next year. But then I remembered, <gasps> we're doing a Christmas thing today. And so- yes. Here it is. Look at this little guy. The glasses are really thoughtful, I believe. Yes. Anyway, so thank I, they you, They kind of pull the whole look together. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what are we doing? We're creating a reindeer language sketch. <gasps> oh my god, that's right. We're creating a language sketch. Okay, so this is the, this is the first time we've done this here. Um, mm -hmm. And I've created dozens of language sketches. Have you created a language sketch? Like a... I have, but never with you, obviously. So this is, okay. we're going to be flying <laughs> by the seat of our pants today. Okay, so, um, what? Oh, wow, I really read that wrong. I'm not even going to say what I read. Okay, so, um, okay, there we go. Now we're centered. Was that our drum roll? Mm, that, was, that was the our... sound. That's what it sounds like when I'm slowly scrolling the document to the right or left. Mm. Um, but uh yes okay so we're creating a language sketch for reindeers we are doing it in an hour and 55 minutes um and then we're going to spend uh two hours after that um taking it down you know tearing it down unsketching isn't that, isn't that part of conlanging yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's always that's always the saddest part of every TV show I work on, where it's like you know, it's wrapped, the show is all done, and so then I have to take the language apart and put it away. Just, you know, piece by piece. I mean, otherwise, like there'll be no more languages to make because like you can only use the pieces for you know. So many times. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we are. <laughs> oh wow, people are already jumping straight ahead. Okay, right? so. So um, just to just to catch up, so in this kind of game world, right? I was I was mainly aiming towards like small critters to like do battle with one another, um, but there could be there could be in the in the nether regis, uh, regions regions um, larger animals that are imbued with the gift of speech, and so perhaps in the far and distant north, perhaps in what used to be called Finland, there will be you know 
a, uh, a, a race of gigantic reindeers ready to do battle for some reason. And so if that becomes the case, this is the base we're going to build on. So, um, I, Loving it already. When, when I was in Finland, um, the very first restaurant that I ate at, I looked at, I, lo I, I looked it up, and it was a place called uh, Gu, which means um, moon. Um, Ooh. Nice. By the way, you know the, the do you know the sign for strange in ASL? Off the top of my head, no. But as soon as you do it, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah. Yeah, it it's just um, it, it always stuck with me. It's this. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I used to get it confused with search. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I for me, it, the sign strange, it, it really jived with me because it felt like it was like a crescent moon, and you know clouds in front of your face, and you know, and I was just like, yeah, that is strange. I like that. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, that's I like jasmines. <laughs> mm. Which one are you laughing at? Um, Jasmine's recent. Am I in front of you now? You're usually ahead of me. Oh, the plot twist? Mm -hmm. I was still stuck on Mateus's, the roaming reindeer punk of Neo-Finland. <laughs> and Jake asked if they would be the giants of the frozen north. Mmm, nice. Okay, oh, right, so the restaurant, right? So, uh, cool, the restaurant there in Helsinki. Very good, very good. And... They had reindeer on the menu, and so, like, I couldn't not get it. I hate reindeer in Alaska, if it makes you feel better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we've shared this experience. So, go ahead, since yours was earlier, let's start with yours. How was your reindeer? It honestly tasted like meat. I, like, it just, it wasn't, I don't know. I feel like at some point, it just tastes like me. Okay, well, for me, I, it's probably how it's prepared, because the way they did at that restaurant there, it was stellar. Absolutely stellar. It reminded me of the, of the time that I had, uh, I had gone to a restaurant in Moorhead, Minnesota, and had elk. It was either going to be walleye or elk, because like, I wanted to try something regional. But it was like, well, you right, know. but after a while, elk, deer, moose, and reindeer kind of all taste the same. Let me tell you. The elk, <laughs> the elk was good. It was very deep, all right? Okay. But the reindeer was so much better. Oh, okay, my God. Okay, so I think ostrich is better than reindeer, though. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Okay. By the way, at the uh, at the uh, at the restaurant that is that is the double R on Twin Peaks. I've been there. It's up in Washington, and for whatever reason, the restaurant they just have like they have over a hundred burgers on their menu, including like you know bison and ostrich. Right. I didn't do it, but um, anyway. Uh, you should someday. Okay, ostrich. All right. Anyway. Um, and then tell me if it was better <laughs> than the reindeer. <laughs> people <laughs> Sven, okay don't you think i'm right oh. <laughs> so we need um some sounds yeah okay so yeah all right 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 so we're making a sketch we are here to not just talk about random things we've eaten in our lives yes okay so we're making a sketch uh i know that logan had suggested labials and i believe suggested labial trills but i don't know let's just let's just do something fun what speaks to you reindeerly. <laughs> reindeerly, that's great. Um wow. <laughs> reindeerly. Um you know what, Mike? That's actually an interesting point. Maybe we should only have except I really for some reason I'm feeling the uvular for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like okay, let me let me tell you what I'm thinking of. Like that just Somehow, uh, my head is in Finland, right? And so I'm thinking of like, you know, really like heavy metal reindeers, you know? <laughs> um, and, yes. And for some reason, since I was thinking of the restaurant Koo, the Who comes to mind. 
not the who the band from England, but the who H U the band from Mongolia. The you know the did not know them. Oh, you gotta look them up. They're oh man, COVID really killed them. They were gonna tour the United States for the first time ever this year, and it was all called off. They're this heavy metal band from Mongolia that sings in Mongolian. And uses traditional instruments, and they are so good. Holy crap. Those guys are amazing. Anyway, so yeah, I'm imagining these hulking heavy metal reindeer. But are they hulking or are they hulking? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, let's ask this three ways Are they hulking? Are they hulking? Or are they hulking? That was what I was going for. Then you want a pharyngeal. You want a pharyngeal, my dear, not a uvular. So let's make that happen. Okay, um, we're probably not going to have dental and alveolar, but let's. We'll kind of figure that out as we go. We'll delete columns as we go. I'm just going to add column right here, and then put pharyngeal. Um, and you know, it might not be pharyngeal. It might be epiglottal. Um, I can do so. Pharyngeal is like you know, like. So like uh uh right? I don't remember what that means, but it's something in in um it's need to. Like, you know, you have a need to, right, in Arabic. So that's the pharyngeal, but then the epiglottal it like goes a step further. So <laughs> that hurts to watch. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Trill stuff. now. <laughs> you can't do a pharyngeal trill. Nobody can. You can and do an epiglottal trill. So you can... Africa is what Jake is asking about. Ta ta. Doesn't ta. sound very metal to me. <laughs> nah. Um, so Jake, yeah, I think technically you could like force it to happen, but. By the way, I think that this is an epiglottal trill. Like, don't quote me on this, but I think it is. <gasps> ah! Is that it? <laughs> It feels like it's in the right place. You know, can you hear the trilling a little bit? Here, I'll try to do it. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to do it at it's a like lower... It's friends when Ross tries to make the dinosaur sound what they may have sounded like. I'll try to do it at a lower pitch. I'll try to do it at a lower pitch. <gasps> it's like you can feel it right there, right? It's above the glottis, so I think that's got to be what... I feel like that's a reindeer call. <laughs> Like, maybe it doesn't need to be the entire, you know, like, in the, the full language, but maybe we need to have it as a as a greeting. <laughs> okay, two things. One, have you seen Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? Mm, I don't know. Okay, well, there's this part where he's making a bunch of bird calls, and then the reporters make him look foolish. And then, how about bringing a baby? No. Oh, there's this part where the guy is trying to imitate a leopard call, and it's just so funny. He's just, you know. <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> you see Much Ado About Nothing when Kenneth Brownell tries to imitate a bird? <laughs> oh, God. We just we just talk about Much Ado About Nothing right now from now on. Mm. Yeah, excellent. I can do that. Um... She is sent to bid me. I'm into dinner. <laughs> okay, okay. So no. Pharyngeal. The world must be peopled. <laughs> God, right. I love him. Okay. Um, so are we, are we doing? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ask you. Are we doing this? Uh, oh wait, yeah. I need to move. Uh, no, no, no. Doing that. Look at the cell. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're doing both. <laughs> yes. Okay, you know what sound you know, that whether, is. Whether they're they're actually phonemic or not, like maybe one is <laughs> phonemic and the other one is not, I don't know. But let's have them both. Okay, can you produce that second sound? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you expect me to be able to? I can help you to. I can help you to if you'd like. Okay. So really, it's better to think of it as an approximate rather than a fricative. Okay. And so you know how um, you go with ooh, and then you just kind of like push in, and you get a what? And then you know how you get you have e, and then you push in, and you get a ya. Sure. Now go with 
Ah, and pushing in the same way. But back here, not yes. up here. Ah, uh, 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 uh. that's the sound. That's the sound. Okay. Can you do it? Try it. <laughs> not while I'm laughing. People have to speak Arabic when they're laughing. <laughs> it does, doesn't work for me. Um, Mike says maybe we should voice the fricatives when they're word final instead of devoicing them like we do in the possum language. There's a language where that happens, isn't it? But only the fricatives. See, that would be interesting. Okay, I'm trying. I have to. I have to think about it before I can do it. Ah, uh, start there. <laughs> the two things I can't do: <laughs> random noises and singing. Ah, <laughs> oh, ooh, there we go. That, that was it. That's good. That was it. <laughs> you did it. There we go. Um. Oh, Ragdoll. Merry Christmas and Yay. the next day for you. And Rosso, yeah, this is, it's a special episode, so we're not working on the possums, so yeah. people who normally watch won't be missing anything uh, on the possums. We're just going to create a real quick 17 minutes in, and we know two sounds in the, the language <laughs> sketch. <laughs> yeah. Also, Rosso, what are you doing here? Go spend time with your family. You ain't, nobody's forcing you to be here. <laughs> anyway, so Jesse, you did it perfectly that was the sound Wonderful. that was the sound so now you can pronounce you know Arabia. uh exactly just like that okay so all right i like this okay and hi veronica hey okay so we got that settled pharyngeal uh, nasal is of course impossible um and let's see oh I gosh think... i don't know Christmas. Christmas. Um, I think <laughs> since we're doing pharyngeal, mm -hmm. we should not. I think the. You know what? Maybe we should only. The fricatives. We should only have labial, alveolar, and pharyngeal. Nothing else. Hmm. Oops. Sorry. Let's go ahead and get rid of this dental column. I don't see... I think, I think we should get rid of the glottal column, too. All right. All right. Let's do it. Okay, I'm with it. I'm with it. You are you probably want to keep palatals, knowing you. I would normally, but for this language, I'm saying let's let's lean out of it because our possums have leaned so far into palatals yeah, they that have. maybe we can take a break. Yeah, there's a reckoning. Let's get rid of it. There's a reckoning coming with that, by the way. Um, oh, no. sorry. Um, uh, no, like one day we're going to realize it's just too many. It's too many palatals. <laughs> Never too many. Never. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I think oh, we on. should. I think that we should also very radically get rid of all approximants. Uh, that's too far. That's too far. <laughs> you. Hold on. It's trying to be radical. Hold on. Hold on. I'm holding. Let's, okay, so first, all right. We got that. We don't need an L. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, we could have huh, and uh. Oh, crap. Ma. Rose. Oh. That, that is beautiful. Yes. I okay. do like that trill. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. There we go. Um, I think that we should have uh, Q at the very least. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think, you know what could be fun? Hmm. Is only having voiceless stops and all the voiced variants come in only specific environments. Uh, okay, so the, the, the voice stops are allophones, which is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the phonetic chart, we'll still, we, I mean, they'll, they'll still be there, right? Okay, let's, um, okay, we've got this no for now. Africans. No Africans. <laughs> okay. 
Do you have to have a uvula to do a uvular trill? I hope this isn't going to be followed up with because reindeers don't have uvulas. It's the, the jiqui gave them a... There we go. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, what do we think about... Sorry, go ahead. I actually, I'm just like, I like this. Okay. Kind of like it too. It's very, it's very sparse, you know, it's very, yeah. And I, I'm actually going to say let's only have an M and an N. The other two are allophones. Sure. Was there a color coding system I had for this? For things that yes, were just allophones? Green. green is allophone. Red is disappeared from the language. Got it. Okay. Uh... But we won't have anything really disappear. <laughs> yeah. We'll have some vowels disappear or something. Just... Um... Well, in this case, now I'm thinking that we do have, um, probably are going to have this. Okay. I mean, if, if you want it to be evenly well, or if you just want it to be an oddball. Well, um, the, the reason is like, if it's just allophonic variation, you know, and right. I think, um, I think that we should stick with having these phonemes, though, for the fricatives. So this is actually... I agree. Yeah. After we got rid of everything else, I like having both phonemes for the fricatives. Yeah. Hold on a sec. I think most non-humans lack uvulas. I think... Don't we actually have uvulas to wait. make sure that we don't swallow wait. our food? Wait! Oh, boy. I think everybody, including everybody in the comments, just missed something really big. Veronica Hamilton, you do not have a uvula right now. <laughs> what? But tomorrow, she can, you know. <laughs> I mean, look, you just, you, you, can, you, you never know. It's... It was taken out. Veronica said it was taken out. Unbelievable. I Okay, let's think about this. Oh, I I feel like that is the uvula that's doing that. But on the other hand, something like ah oh, ah oh. Really, uh that's not you that should be asking me that question. Like you should be telling me the answer to that question. Can you? Can you do a uvular trill or like a, a uvular fricket? Can you do any of those? Can you do the ka? I mean, you can do a post velar, certainly, because velars are actually very, very high. <laughs> Crap. Um, right? <laughs> like, if if the, you know what I'm saying? Like, if the uvula is yes, back here, I, right? I, right. And the, and the soft palate is here. This is the hard palate. Velars are usually here, not like here. You know what I'm saying? Ka, 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 ka. Like, you just need to be able to hit the area. I don't think you actually need the the full uvula to hit it. You just need to be able to hit that area. Uh, I mean, no, like, try it now is what I'm saying. Try it, like, right now. Um, it... I, obviously, the uvula doesn't have much sensation, right? But mm -hmm. I can feel it against the back of my tongue doing a okay. thing. Uh, it's definitely okay. happening. But Veronica also had some of the soft palate trim, so that's interesting. So maybe, but that's okay. Maybe just at that point, uvular and velar just kind of, you know, come, come together a little bit. Yeah. Also, I mixed up soft palate and hard palate, depending on which way you were looking, sorry. Um, I noticed, but I figured you were really focusing on the fact that... <laughs> I'm honestly... The fact that you noticed and didn't say anything, very nice. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Veronica, you can do velar fine. Can you do anything behind the velar? Yeah. 
It's something a completely different. Something that sounds audibly different to you, right? Something that sounds different from k and closer to p. Man, I wish. Okay. You know, okay, some point in time in the future, this is going to be possible. I just want you to imagine where it's like, you know, obviously with permission, you could just click on somebody and their like image would come up and they would be talking on the screen. You know, that would be cool. Yeah, that's like future tech, but I think it'll happen one day. That'd be really cool because I'd love to see you demonstrate. Um, okay, so I like our consonants. Mike had a suggestion yeah. to go minimal on vowels. Yeah, I like that three vowel system mm -hmm. oh goodness mike you did not just suggest that we only have the mid vowels as our three vowel system <laughs> i've seen it i've seen it actually what and and yes but what are we really going to do that the funny thing i was thinking veronica can do the the stop nice and veronica i'm going to go ahead and take away your think and just like yes you can because if you feel like you're doing it you're doing it yeah also, Aquamelon, yeah, that was actually what I was thinking. I was thinking of a two-valve system as well. Two? Which two? Not those two. Obviously the A and O. Not those two. I was thinking of um, Bard I and Schwa. You were not. Yeah. Mr. Anti-Central Vowels wants to start our vowel system with all central vowels. Yeah, just kind of like that binary distinction, you know. Are we going to keep them? Um, For this special language, do we get to keep them? I mean, probably not. They would probably get colored by surrounding vowels and turn into other things. But, you know, just like a bardian. They would, o they would only be by each other, surrounding vowels. That's, no, 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 I'm sorry. Two. Surrounding consonants, surrounding consonants. <laughs> Words. So, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the uvulars pull things, pull things back and down, right? The labials around I, things. Right, right. But Destinova has a point that you really just put them in the language so you can kill them. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it is kind of perverse. What is, um, what was it I was thinking of? Not, not, uh, not Edge of Tomorrow. No, nah, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I don't even know where you were going. Hmm. Um, Mike says, what if the only distinction was rounding? Yeah, that's something I thought of too. Um, but let's let's start here. And we're glad you're enjoying it, Aquamelon. Also, very happy you're here. Let's start here. Ah! Okay, can we at least keep the schwa at the end of all of this? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And that was my Christmas gift. <laughs> yep. It's a big one, so birthday gift, too. <laughs> now, that, that would have been both Central Val staying. Because <laughs> my next birthday is a big one, so. <laughs> oh, dream big. Dream big. <laughs> both Central Val's. Goodness gracious. Oh. Uh. All right, are we ready? Oh wait, are we going to be? Are Ooh. we going to start with the the bar die? Yes, but I do want to. I do want to address something uh, that Dark Horse just mentioned. Okay, there is somebody that created or, or was pitching back at, at TED in 2013 um, paper that could actually like animate. Like it was real paper, but the images could move on it. Yeah. We're in Harry Potter. I know. So look it up. Look up that talk. Like, hopefully you'll be able to Google it. 2013. I know. Um, it was but, It was wild. Okay. If we're going to start with a bar die, though, doesn't it need to be in there and then in red? So that way we remember that it's there and that's one of our proto vowels. Uh, no, I already killed it. Sorry. Sorry. You, you killed it before it was even a proto vowel? Yes, I did. Yeah. Sorry wow. about that. You were, you were ready. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> So, and at some point, Veronica has more uvular data from the field. Oh, can save that for later. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. Okay. Let's, all right. Let's start with what we have in black as our proto system. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's, um, 
Let's go to, uh, where's, um, let's actually, I know this is going to seem a little uh, counterintuitive, but let's jump straight ahead to typology. <clears throat> Excellent. So that we can start um, coming up with some forms and playing around with some sounds and seeing what we like. Okay. They're obviously a head final language. Okay. Got it. Because the tail is the most, most important part of the reindeer? Because they follow each other. <laughs> oh, okay. And wouldn't the stronger one need to be in the back, so that way if they get attacked, they could, you know, turn around and... It does make sense with the, with the reindeer army. Mm -hmm. The generals are in the back. They're the ones, mm -hmm. you know... You have the line of bass players, right? Then the drummers, right? Yes. Yeah. And okay. we know who the real we know who the real head of any band is. It's the drummer, and they're always behind. So, yeah. Yeah, it's um, I'm for those who are familiar with Metalocalypse, uh, and that includes Jesse, by the way, who is very familiar with Metalocalypse because you're not my friend if you're not familiar with it. Um, I am. I mean, they yeah. need to come up with a different word for me. <laughs> <laughs> How about person I used to know? <laughs> I'm over here Googling metal lips. <laughs> I'm imagining these these reindeer as being like a composite of like real life reindeer and Nathan Explosion. You know? <laughs> Cool. So, so these vowels. Be... <laughs> no, wait, wait. We're on typology. Head final. Yeah. Do it. Okay. Is uh, head final, and then let's talk about inflections. If uh, if over here is uh, what should we call it? Um, um, Okay, over here is over here is Vietnamese, and over here is uh, ineptitude. All right, where are we sliding on this scale? Oh, are you talking about in terms of, of glomming on? Yeah, and glomination. <laughs> okay, I was like, what scale? We have so many different things we could be ranking on this scale, but okay. Yeah. So from one to the other. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, we're going that way. Yeah. No. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. How far? Um, I would say three-fourths of the way. Okay. Okay. It's actually very similar to our possums, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, lang time is a head final, uh, largely agglutinating language. Um, the basic word order is S-O-V. And yes, the what gets glommed onto the verb is actually the object. The subject stays its own thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Basic word order is so be with object incorporation. Um, that's a good idea. Uh, okay. So then, in terms of the ordering of the other elements, uh, let's talk quickly. Adjectives, yay or nay. Hmm. Let's not do adjectives. Got it. Cool. Um, then uh, demonstratives. Yes. Well, that was an interesting choice. <laughs> so this language will have demonstratives. A radical. Okay. The no, no. Now, where might I'm these demonstratives be placed? That's the question. Demonstrative noun uh, or noun demonstrative. We can get rid of the demonstratives. No, we're not going to get rid of the demonstratives. Come on. <laughs> I was just asking about the order, not whether we're going to have them. That's not a question. <laughs> it's a question. Um, they're going to be before. Okay. Okay. So then... Uh, the other relevant orders are 
demonstrative noun. Um, how about uh, genitive noun? Genitive noun. Mm -hmm. Relative clause. Oh, let's do relative clause before the noun. Relative clause noun. You got it. And uh, um, relative orders are. Relative clause noun and prepositions or postpositions. Hmm. I mean, postposition makes more sense given the head final. Okay. But I'm thinking. What are you feeling? Uh, like I'm thinking about whether that should be a, a an oddball out but it would have to make sense why it's an oddball out. Yeah, so we would have to come from relative clauses. <laughs> what? <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, because we don't have adjectives, anything that would be adjective-like would have to come before the noun in a relative clause form. Hold on a sec. Let me let me tease this out. Let me see if this actually works. Um, okay, so the uh, 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 the reindeer that is on the mountain. All right. And in, in case you're wondering why I immediately said relative clause before the noun, it was mainly about the object incorporation into the verb. Because that would be difficult to get the relative clause smashed in between with the object incorporated in the verb. So yeah, just in case we ever need to modify it, wanted that option. That's that's really interesting. So it's like the object would be a part of the verb, yet could still be modified. That's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. It feels like it violates some serious rules about language, but it doesn't make. It, there's no reason why it couldn't work. Oh, I love it. Thank you for that. Damn, now I, You're uh, welcome. now I want this stupid thing to be a language. Darn it. Uh, I want to keep going with it. Wow, that's a really good idea. Okay. Um, that's why we're going to expand the link time verse. <laughs> okay. The mountain that is... Okay, so... The, the reindeer that is on the mountain, mm -hmm. except that what we're talking about is the mountain. Hold on. always feel like so he's thinking I feel like we don't need to have dead airspace so I'm just going to chit chat <laughs> while David thinks and tell us tell us like some kind of cool fact about you like what's your favorite color what is your social security number something like that <laughs> not gonna get me today mm. um so Right, Logan? Them snails. We need to get on them snails. <laughs> that was the cutest gigantic snail, I think. Um, it's got a lot of charm. I've ever seen. Um, I've never seen a gigantic snail in real life, so I guess I shouldn't say it's It's also the only, but it was a very cute snail. Um, and I happen to think snails are adorable, even in their normal forms, their normal little tiny forms. And we get a lot of them right outside our house. And so every time it rains and they really are all over, I'm very careful about walking in our driveway because I'm terrified I'm going to step on one. Yeah, that's really a bummer. You know, you accidentally step on a stale. It just ruins the whole day. Oh, Jasmine, on Twitter, there was a picture I shared um, of a giant snail. <laughs> giant. So giant. Um but that also reminds me on Instagram, I should share the picture of the tiny turtle that was in our driveway. <gasps> a real turtle? Oh my God. Yeah. So while you're thinking, I'm going to share that photo on Instagram. <laughs> um, so I gotta find it first. People whose head is like kind of in the language game right now, look at what I've typed and see, figure out what I'm trying to do and then <gasps> fix it. 
interesting. That would lead to prepositions if you did something like that. What if we yeah. if we fixed it? Yeah. No, yeah, I'm trying. I'm I'm trying my best here, but like, I can't wrap my my head around this. Mm, you know what? No, because it would be mountain encumbered reindeer. What do you mean? Wait, no, because that would be the small relative clause thing would be before it. It's really the mountain that is encumbered that the... <laughs> I didn't do that for jokes. I was I'm trying here. <laughs> no, I'm laughing because I can't figure out like my brain is... Yeah. So essentially, because that would be... Oh. What have I done? I don't know. I think we almost have to have postquisitions. I don't know that I can get my brain to go around that. If you can make your brain go around it and explain it, I'm willing to see be that on board with Logan it. is saying the exact same thing that my brain is saying right now. Okay. Oh, just do it. Is that like it, that? It feels like I'm getting it, but I can't explain it. I thought I had it, and when I tried to explain it, I started laughing, and then you thought I, that I thought you were making a joke, so I decided I should stop. <laughs> oh, man. Because... I'm trying to figure out why the mountain would be after the husband trod. Uh, because has been trod is a, is a relative clause. Right. In so relative. the has been trod mountain reindeer? Yeah. Somehow. Okay. Somehow it like works. So it's a relative clause within a relative clause. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. He lived on the mountain that's so weird how can uh how can a verb have a prepositional phrase as its argument that doesn't seem possible does it i think my head just undid language dang but also uh, mountain is well so no the, the the head of this is reindeer the head of this is mountain you're correct so okay. the, the head of a of a prepositional phrase should be the preposition right uh. the only way that i can think of that working is never mind i just lost it again okay I finally found it. What are you looking for? The picture of the tiny turtle. Oh, okay. Well, it, it's certainly because possible. My for... brain, my brain is still struggling, so I thought I would go ahead and just post the picture. Yeah, um, Aquamelon. It is definitely possible for prepositions to come from verbs. It's just that they they usually come from uh, verbs that come before their objects, not verbs that come after their objects. Uh, if we right. just go now in postposition, we're probably good. I think we need to do postposition. We'll, we'll shelve this idea for another time. Okay. Okay. Okay, my brain can be wrapped around that, so I'm good now. Okay, good. All right, so... We've got the, the, the basic stuff set. Let's talk about nominal morphology. Do we want mm -hmm. cases? And if so, do we want lots of them or littles of them? Little. Okay. Okay. If ah. the object is incorporated. Well, if it had a big case system, that might be a reason for the object to be incorporated. That's true. 
Um, in fact, you could have it <laughs> the dreaded trigger system where essentially you're incorporating objects all the time as like the most, uh, the highlighted argument, right? And, okay. and uh, it, could, it could incorporate via a variety of functions. Um, not just direct object, but indirect object, location, instrument, and so on. Well, Megan says that, that we should really do one with lots of cases. Okay. There we go. So maybe that day is now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Ragdoll, I support your choices with the high water, high water Hellcats. I almost said high water. <laughs> totally works. Mm -hmm. Logan is saying incorporation usually indicates backgrounding, not highlighting. Doesn't matter to me. And Mike says that the dog should have a lot of cases. Keep that in mind. I think here. Oh, I see. So are you thinking about which cases, or are you thinking about the incorporation? I'm thinking about the incorporation. The idea is that, like, when you're saying, like, you're banana eating, it means that you're not really focused on the banana. Um, it's just like, you know, mm. it's like, it's like, it's indefinite. It's number doesn't matter. It's particularities don't matter. On the other hand, if this thing is going to be modified by a relative clause, then <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> well, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, what, I, what if then that of my the... telling object right. form is actually the unmarked because it's incorporated and then okay. other cases are marked but i'm writing this all right because this is important and <laughs> hold on we Sorry, need I'm laughing at veronica we need a we need like a a heavy metal font for this. That's not that's not metal enough, even though it's called Azrafel. Hold on a sec. Wait, isn't there the one that's like called chilling or something? <coughs> no. Bless you. Thank you. Oh hey Bibliridian. Who? Who? And, and Veronica, yes, when you quote, my grandmother got run over by a reindeer, I am going to laugh. There we go. My goodness. Not even invoked. Well, it's so nice to see you, Viploridian. So, now you can see this. <laughs> I, that of my telling banana ate. <laughs> da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. Love it. Okay. Obviously, you came just in time, Bibliridian. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some heavy metal font screaming. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Just gonna... There. Sorry. Just needed to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, I should really be looking at the page where you are to see what you're doing in real time. Oh, you know what's hilarious? Hmm. I do not have that font. So it looks the least amount of heavy metal you could imagine. Aww. Because it is in its default sort of plain sans serif Aww. font. Yeah. And that's really funny to me. I'll have to send it to you. It's a font called Frankenstein. Um, it's, uh, but yeah, how many fonts do you have on your computer? I mean, I have a lot. How many? I don't I don't know. I need to count, I guess. But that doesn't seem like a productive way of using a language sketch live stream. I suppose you're right. And so after the live stream, I will I just count my fonts. I just expected and I will you to know. Everybody on I Twitter. just expect you to know off the top of your head. I believe I have uh, 1,109. I do not have that many. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's talk. Are these nouns going to inflect for number? Are they? I don't know. I feel like I've made a lot of decisions. Okay. How about, uh, let's just say, 
Inflect for singular and plural. The dual is not metal. Uh, time nouns inflect for singular and plural. For case. Uh, and uh, and for case, but probably no gender. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we can get rid of that. Um, just write that. We need to like take out all the reindeer or lane time and just put reindeer or reindeer now. <laughs> oh, we'll have a name for this language by by the end of by the end of this. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so we'll it'll be an easy find and replace. Okay. Lang time has a number of grammatical and local cases, and possession is probably going to be tied into that. Okay. So um, we'll worry about verbs in a minute. We're going to say uh, for adjectives, um, any time adjectives yeah, are simply uh, um, relative clauses with a stative verb used as its head. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna say your name wrong because I'm not sure how to do all the X's, but Koji or Soxi? I'm guessing um, Shoshi so, Shiliak. That's my guess. Shoshi, maybe? Um, it says that nouns should inflect for every string of a base. <laughs> and Dark Horse really wants those nouns to inflect for a time for some sort of tense noun action. <laughs> um, and Mateus asked if uh, patrons are getting a PDF of this. Uh, yes. Yes. And Veronica says Deer Core should be the name. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll leave uh, demonstratives for a moment. We're definitely going to need... Okay, um, all right, let's... Uh, let's... Okay. I feel like this should be one of those things where cases are fairly separable and there should be, like, a, a numbery thingy that you can see, you know? You get where I'm going with this? Yeah. Yeah. My my head is in is in the is in the Caucasus, if that's how you say that. Is that how you say that? Caucasus? Caucasus. Um, I'm Caucasus. just gonna say that you probably shouldn't ask me, the person who apparently has very idiolectal pronunciations, how to say something. <laughs> the Georgian language from the Caucasus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the Georgian, but mm. you know. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm getting getting distracted. Okay, let's. Um, Never. Yeah. All right. Let's do some. Um, let's do some noun number first. All right. We need some nouns. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say nouns yeah, like for singular and plural. Um, Oh, oh let, actually, let's let's abstract a bit, just for just real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Plural, I, singular is going to be basic. Plural, should it be built with some sort of suffix or prefix? Or what are you thinking? I feel like they would go in the same place as the, no, or as the demonstrative. Yeah? Like if it were in some sort of number or <gasps> something. Like an... Yeah. And so that would suggest prefix. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, Megan. Megan's getting married tomorrow. What? A Christmas wedding. How is this just coming up for the first time? Oh, my gosh. That's fun. Like what? Um, Darkhorse says we should really have antler as a noun. <laughs> That's so true. And Jake says it's um, caucuses. What? What? How did you? What? I'm just reading all the comments. Lots of congratulations. I'm just. Dang. Man. Oh, Megan does get a word. There yeah. will be. That's an excellent suggestion, Dark Horse. Yeah. That's, gosh, that is so cool. 
man, I can't believe you're getting married and you didn't consult us, but you know, I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> we could have officiated the language or the wedding. The both language. of us could, because both uh -huh. of us are actually registered officiants and both of us have actually performed weddings. <laughs> But as as a consolation prize, Megan will appear in this language. Yes. It may be more like Megan. Yeah. But it will happen. Yep. Okay. Here are some examples. Okay. Pushing in. <laughs> <laughs> Dark horse, you can't make jokes when I'm taking drinks of water. I almost sprayed my entire computer. <laughs> Megan is the word for ma witch. <laughs> Big Princess Bride fan. That's so good. Okay. Okay. Um, need to do some different text bullets. Uh, how about stars? That'll be fun. Everybody loves stars. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. So our first noun is Megan. <laughs> Megan or Megan? That's a good question, Megan. What would you prefer? Megan or Megan? Or Muggan. Or, or Muggan. Or Muggan. Oh my god, Muggan is kind of cute. Mm -hmm. um, second, that would be Megan, right? No. I don't know. Which one was second? Yeah. You're going to... Help us out here, Megan. Do you want the schwa or the A? Where's Roman? Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Megan, pay attention. What is schwa. your mind on other things for some reason? Okay, so it's going to be Megan. Megan, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so. That was great. All right, are we going to are we just going to throw out right now um, for the time being anyway intervocalic voicing? Yes. Okay. Uh, that was actually one of the things I was going to suggest for the historical notes. Yeah. Um uh, what was I going to say? Um I actually mine was my suggestion was going to be intervoicing voicing, so whether it's like I don't know, a voiced fricative with a vowel after it, it's going to be voiced in between. So like Yes. Mivdo instead of mivto. Okay. All right. Well, let's just. Uh, and then I had a question about that. Uh, was it going to be uh, fricatives too? Fricatives are already voiceless slash voiced. I wouldn't have them change. Okay. But they can change the voicing of a stop that follows it. Yes. Oh. Yes. Why is that? Look at that ugly. Oh my God. Oh, sorry. Um, what what well, have you done? Why did it change its font like that? That's so weird. Okay. That is really unfortunate. Yeah. Okay. So you go plus voice in between. Um, so in between. Um, how do you? What do you do if it's a consonant or a vowel? Like Don't you just say S in between plus voice plus voice. So you just don't have a okay. All right. How progressive. Okay. Um, because it's any sound. Voice of stops P T K and I'm just gonna Why do Why is the... the one still all weird? Yeah, I don't know. That's just unfortunate. God, I really want to fix that. I know. Go on, go back. I'm going to see if I can. I'll, I'll play around with it. You go back to where we need to be in the document. Okay. Okay, so let's go. <clears throat> Got that. Okay. 
Okay, so we got something that starts with a nasal, mm -hmm. um, and oh, and what? Oh, and what's it going to mean? That is a wonderful question. Something that would be basic. Um, Reindeer. Yeah, that's actually really good. Why yeah. not? Yeah. There we go. Ooh, all right, I like this. Uh, okay, so next, we need something that begins with something other than a nasal, something different. So it can either be a voiceless stop, it can be a vowel, it can be a fricative, um, uh, sibilant versus non-sibilant, whatever you want. Throw something out, anybody. Let's try to stick with like CBCB for the moment. Or, you know, you know what I mean. David, I have taken that number away, I have put it back on. I have changed the entire font of that whole section. I Oof. changed it back. And the one is still weird. Dang. Okay, we'll fix it later. Good suggestion, Dark Horse. We're going to start with the R thingy. Excuse me. All right, so starting with... Love uh, it. <laughs> Raika. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, we got something. Oh. What comes next? <laughs> Is that what we're ending up with, Rudolph? Rudolph. Rudolph. I mean, we can do it. We could. And it's not going to be the word for reindeer. It's going to no. be the word for disappointment. <laughs> it's going to be, right be the word for antler. Oh, good idea. Can't learn it. Okay, be right back. And David has left. <laughs> but yes, this is. Oh, Jake Kudach. That would be fun. This is so bizarre. Did not have someone on the other end. Anyway, how's everyone doing? Oh, that could be kind of a fun word. You know what? It's been a while since we've both done, if that's grammatical. <laughs> grammatical? <laughs> it's, it's been a I bit. I know, Veronica, I really needed to be better about taking control. Yeah. It was my chance. Go away again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to suggest it's been a while since we have enjoyed a Copico. Yes. And I'll get my unicorn mug. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, Copico. Yeah. Take the good one. I'm ready. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> the Christmas Copico. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, but I go, I am back home. Which is why I have my Copico. Right, Jasmine? Isn't that just the cutest mug ever? Mm. And I like the name tag so much. I'll eat my Copico in a minute. The name tag mm. was so cute because it's a pastel rainbow that I've left the name tag on there. Even Aww. though it was a gift to me like a year ago. And I just, I like the tag. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, now I'm, now I'm ready to focus. Mm. Mm, okay. Give me, uh, pitch me something with a voiceless stop. <laughs> oh, cracked all you just noticed. Jumper, eh? Ooh. Let's start with a Q. Got it. Where should we go after the Q, everyone? Oh, and, and Linguista Anoba said, hey, toch. No O. We don't have an O, but also we could kind of take some, oh, Jake is saying ka, ka, ka. I should not do that with a Copico in my mouth. <laughs> Just got to push it to the side. Just got to push it to the side. Ka, 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 ka. Look at Veronica's suggestion. Kindly. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
And by the way, uh, Linguista Nerva, we don't have an O or an E, but we do have schwa's. <laughs> e, U, A, E. Uh, that's it. Nose! I think that works. I like it. <laughs> Coffee, I like that. Because it's because my head is again right back in Metalocalypse. The first episode of which we all remember very well. With their it's a, Oh, so it's like a show with episodes. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. It's good. And I didn't even spit out my Coke Coke. What are we gonna do with you? Uh, Make more languages. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's that's probably the thing that. Yeah. Mm, we do need a word for snow or ice, so at some point. Mm, yes. Let's do that next. Okay. Give me uh, something that starts with a fricative. Fricative. Oh, Dark Horse is saying Zva. We don't have an L, we so that would have L. to be like Zva. Now, the question is do we allow consonant clusters? Ragdoll suggesting we start with an F. Um, yeah, so we haven't talked about if we're going to allow consonant clusters yet. And we have all of these fricatives that are voiced and voiceless, and so it makes it really, it makes one really question if there's going to be an allow, allowing us to have voiceless fricative followed by voice. Um, right. Uh, Linguista and no Eva e. is, But we could do two schwas. Oh, but then that would sound very close to another <laughs> word. It's, it actually sounds very close to an Arabic word, which is likewise funny for the same reason. The word for only... Really? Yeah, the word for only in Arabic is uh, fakat. Mm. Fakat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's... You just have to learn it and say, well, all right. <laughs> Speaking a different Jasmine language. Is, hmm? Jasmine is suggesting Zaka, which would become Zaga. Let's do that. That's, that's an easy one. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and... Okay. Now let's do one that is um, a voiceless non-sibilant fricative. So we're looking at F or P. Oh, we got to go pharyngeal. We have it. Let's mm. do it. Yeah. Because we already have an F in a word. It's all good. We don't have the pharyngeal in a word. Oh, yeah. Sorry, linguist. I was doing the sounds. So the sounds E, U, A, E. Those four sounds. Um, so, yeah, something that begins with H. We need some more schwas and e's. Let's stay away from a's and u's. We have like all a's. Let's do something without the ahs. Mm hmm. <laughs> um, how about <laughs> something? Ooh. Ooh. Let's let's see what consonants we Ooh. haven't done yet. What? If we just did ooh followed by a schwa. Um, so we're gonna have two vowels in a row. I don't know. Are we? I don't know. It seems, but uh, not for this. Not for the. Not for this example. Let's do. Hold on. Ooh. 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 Holy. All right, okay, wait. Maybe have it end in the nasal. <laughs> oh, 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 no, oh, no. Sorry, okay, wait, 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 wait. I don't know what just happened, but it was very exciting. You got very... <laughs> yeah. Okay, what do, you, what do you think about that? Also, we need meanings for, for Zaga and Hoof. Aren't we going for snow and ice? Let's do it. 
But this has got to be Obviously, ice. Obviously, Zaga is ice. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, those are singular. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about how they pluralize. So you were thinking, um, you were thinking that this is going to come from the demonstrative. Mm -hmm. The demonstrative is going to come in front. What kind of a demonstrative is going to lead to a plural? I was thinking the number would be placed in the same place as the demonstrative. Oh, okay. Not okay. that the demonstrative itself would become number marking. Okay. Because the demonstrative would say something like that one. I don't know. It made sense when I said it, but now I'm questioning everything. I need to think through this. Ooh, Jasmine wants her duplication. <gasps> that, hmm. I'm not opposed to that. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oh, and then people are asking what gets marked with plural? Bibliardian says plural marking for animates only, maybe, question mark. Um, that is certainly the easy way to do it. It doesn't help us illustrate our the alternations we're trying to do. <laughs> but let's, let's, let's... Because Samuel Lightwing has asked, wait, can ice be pluralized? And I think it can, because, you know, it just means that it's like, at that point when you pluralize it, it's like two ice flows or something. And I mean, unfortunately, more and more ice is breaking off in our world. So yeah. Also, just think about um, think about less less about the meaning and more about can it be done? Can ice right. be pluralized in English? Absolutely, ices. Uh, do we say it a lot? No, not unless it's in a very specific context. But you know, like Italian ices or something like that. But it doesn't mean. I was just going to say, like, if you say that, I'm thinking something frozen dessert wise. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay. Yeah, that is fun to have um, the stops changing. It is. It is fun to have things changing in general. So, if we're going to do this, should we do something to have some more changes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what, but yes. Okay. We have stops, we have fricatives, voiced and voiceless, we have our approximate, and we have nasals. Mm -hmm. Which of these do you want to target? Fricatives. Okay. Did something... Do you need to go check on something? Oh, no, no, it's just a delivery. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right. And then we, of course, we have uh, strong fricatives versus weak if we want to make that type of distinction. Um, so, um, uh, all nouns are reified with partial reduplication. Okay, so, um, like zazaga, hulhuvum. That's yeah. That's 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 enough. That's a gonna hurt. Yeah. I have to wait until I'm done with my Copico to even try that. And then 
We if we were to ah uh, ah 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 them ah ah them ah ah them. I am feeling. I am feeling that. Uh, we cricket has just disappear. And so you end up getting like a sort of length Ooh. and vowel situation. Yes. Okay, I like that because it would disappear uh, in between the reduplication, yep. not yep. that front. Good. That's right, and so it would always be a long vowel, which would look like an internal stem change, which would be cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, so we got two. Do we want to do anything with Rudolf? Or we want to leave it? Rudolf. Rudolf. <gasps> Metathesis? Metathesis? Yes. Rudolf. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow, I love that. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. And then the, the last thing, so uh, we have nasals and we have strong fricatives. Um, are we fine with something like zazaga or and another would be like, you know, I don't know, sisibo, uh, sisiba, and then mimigan? Yes. Okay, we're done. Perfect. So um, I can actually even summarize that here. Uh, uh, the uh, reduplication is based on class, uh, consonant class. Um, oh, but you know, we need to do uh, something that begins with a vowel. So somebody pitch, pitch some sort of noun that starts with a vowel. Um, a C B. In Jasmine, yeah, we would have word internal voiceless consonants if, for example, like maybe the word we want to do right now could be like east two, right? Because it's not between two voiced things. So the T would stay. It wouldn't become east two. And so, yeah, we can get it internally. It's just got to have something voiceless in front of it. Resultant. Uh... Okay, so we have... Ifa, Ifa, a goo. Goodness, that's gonna hurt. Um, um, in dark horse, we don't have a W, ifa. but we could do Ugin, which would become yeah. Ugin. We don't have a So sha. those are all suggestions. In Kuba, we don't have that S in here, but we could do Ifi. Let's do Ifa. I, I kind of like that. Ifa. And that's going to become Eva. And then uh, just pitch us a meaning. Um, the B wouldn't change. The F wouldn't change. Yes, it would. Why? No reason. Carry on. <laughs> and that means it wouldn't change here either. My bad. My bad. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot what we decided. Um, Sorry, what are we doing now? I got sidetracked. Uh, oh, we need a meaning. We need a meaning. Um, Dark Horse says plants. Um, oh, no. I feel like huh? Would be a good one. Magpie says tail. Linguist and nervous says stone. Tail is good, actually. Let's let's do tail. Uh, well, I don't know. Does ifa? Does that feel more like tail or stone to you? Yeah. Got it. All right. Okay, and then possibilities are ifa or ifa. I, it would be a length and foul. Got it. Perfect. Wow, I just saw the playback on that. I made a very serious, judgy face when <laughs> 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 with the other suggestion. Like, no. 
Nice. Um, the, uh, the intervocalic fricative uh, disappears entirely when a word begins with a vowel, that vowel lengthens. Perfect. That is a tidy, nice little system there. I absolutely love Yay. it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, and we're also, we're, we're, we're moving along with some forms here, so that's good. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, Mateus wants to know if we can make a metathesis rule that specific. And yes. <laughs> Haven't you seen what happens in uh, Brazilian Portuguese? It's weird stuff happens, man. Okay. Um, Probably not going to happen in this language, Dark Horse. We don't have enough that's close enough to get that. Fahri. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So that's done. What should we do next? Um, well, we wanted to, at the very least, be able to say a phrase or create a language name, correct? Yeah. Um, so we need to talk about cases. Yeah. And so that we can get to possession. Right. Okay. Um, I feel like we should have something specific and maybe a little bit larger for the accusative. Something that where it buys us something to actually have incorporation, you know? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so let's do that. Um, uh, so, should we do like, um, should we do like one verb then just to be able to do object incorporation just to test out like what we end up doing? I think we can, um, I think we can do cases first. Um, okay. I think. Yeah, I think we can do cases first, and I think we should. Um, because what I'm... Because we can go the traditional accusative, dative, genitive route, or mm -hmm. we can go like the double accusative route, um... And we can think about how we're going to be getting these local cases. Probably coming from post positions. Right. Which are probably coming. Which means cases will be suffixes. I feel like that just triggered some sort of thought process. Yes, yes it did. Cool. I feel like it needs to be a kind of continuum where we have And as you're doing that, Jake, I'm loving all the really random facts that you're dropping in about other languages. And sorry, if I don't always call them out, but I super enjoy that you're putting them in there. So thank you. I feel like this should be, we should have like this thing right here, right? These four things. And then all of the many other cases, the 20 plus cases are going to be built off of these states. Okay the 20 plus cases. Mm -hmm. We will not have time for that in 35 minutes. You'd be surprised, but no, we don't need that many. We just need these. Even this could go further. Definitely could. If the cases, are the cases going to be coming 
from I guess it doesn't matter because the post positions could come from birth. I feel like the affected it can have it, it can do this it can do this it can come from our most powerful vowel which is ah of course yeah and, and, and it can be kind of like an affective lengthening type of thing but with ah so this why is, did you choose ah again sorry oh because it's the most powerful of our vowels sure mm -hmm. i mean with the four that we have right yeah i've just never heard you make a decision just based on power and not based on it it originally was this Be, no no no. in this case like it's coming from it's coming from nowhere you know what i mean like it's coming okay. from okay. like you know how you can sometimes just get evocative out of nowhere because it's just trying to draw prominence and attention to it you know yeah and so this affected thing because like this is what's going to give us our incorporation a, dis mm -hmm. a strong distinction between the kind of backgrounding function that um, that incorporation has, which is something that I said at the very beginning um, and have been consistent about this entire stream um, with no outside help. Um, and then versus this really highlighting the fact that it is being affected. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to... Was I supposed to give more support for that? No. Other than nodding and saying sure? Just, no. just wanted to make sure you didn't feel underappreciated. <laughs> I'm getting rid of the active there. Um, and then... Not possessed. Active. Yes. And so the active. Interesting. Okay. Basic. And then the theme. And this is also just purely phono aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because it's the opposite of the ah in a way. It's 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 a reduction, it's a lessening. You know what I'm saying? Like let me something here. Like, you know, kaha, kaha. You know, kaha, right? It's the effective mm -hmm. and you're and you're trying to draw prominence to it whereas ka uh kaha kaha. You're like drawing back from it you know what i mean uh, sure yeah which i one? feel like it takes more energy for me to do that sound so like that doesn't feel like a drawing back for me but ah. you know right yeah. okay i do know okay okay so that's my idea okay and then for possession right yes You just use the active. Interesting. So reindeer. So like reindeer antler would literally just be reindeer. Reindeer's antler. Yeah. 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 Yes. Just like that. It, it doesn't. And then this just takes, you know, whatever. I, somebody did mention suffix alpnama and I did think about that very briefly, but no, this is, this is fine. Okay. So, um, possession, um, one noun can possess another simply by sitting itself in front of the possessed noun. Uh, and yes. By sitting itself, I like it. No external ornamentation is necessary. The two nouns 
know that they are in a possessive construction. There. I know, yes. yes. Um, and so Jasmine, these are in fact our, our cases and yeah, right now they're just being called affected. Yes, active. okay. So like this is just, this is the schematic, Locked. right? This is the schematic. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what this is going to spell out as, it's going to be things like this. Um, active is going to become nominative. Affected is going to become accusative. Uh, theme is going to become locative. And then you'll have things like, um, like um, affected give equals dative. Um, maybe like, uh, theme um what like uh animal back equals um on top of so that would be what the super s of super, yeah yeah that would be super s of the animal back suppressive is underneath right and no, that would be sub f sub s of and then this this would be like superlative right affected animal back yeah so you see like how this thing is going to build Right, and so this is going to be something very similar. If you ever looked at my language uh, Shivaisa that I did for Thor the Dark World, it's going to be that kind of a deal. Um, but this can get us a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And then um, this is going to be more interesting than this. Uh, for a reduction, a lessening, I think that this is just going to be that, right? Um, but for this, this can get us a lot of stuff. Uh, the number, uh, number, uh, it's, it's most unique case is the accusative, which, uh, uh, which, um, whose form can sometimes be less than predictable. Here are some examples. Okay. Do you want me to copy the noun? Are you already done it? Done it. Copy the noun list. Yeah. So like, we'll we'll just write down what they would be, and then we'll talk about what can happen later. Okay, so my first thought is that we get rid of those weak fricatives, just like we did at the front. Weak fricatives, do we have any in a place where it would be deleted? Yep. Are Ru you saying like we Rudolph. delete them from the front? Rudolph. Oh, from the back, I see. For some reason, probably because I see it already deleted, I just was like, yeah, there is no weak fricative. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so Rudolph just becomes Rudolph. Rudolph, yeah. Then, uh, um, okay, what? Uh -huh. What if uh, yeah. mm -hmm. we got rid of the vowel, um, like Hofuma becomes Hofma? Oh, okay. Like essentially, Ifra. like I think either that vowel gets lost or, or it's just a lengthened vowel at the end. So that way it's always like a two syllable yeah. at most Migna. for something of this size. Um, obviously if it were uh, a longer like compound word or something, uh, there would be more syllables, but in general, most of the root words, the most syllables they would have, even in the accusative form, would be two syllables, which helps because it's going to be incorporated into a verb. That is so unbelievably cool. I absolutely love it. Well, good. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, um, 
let me let me rewrite this then. Um, uh, yeah, what's the best way to put this? Um, the, uh, the form of the accusative is, for the most part, a disyllabic. Or uh, how about how about this? Um, the accusative is a sincere attempt to end the word on a heavy foot. Does that sound about right? Okay. Okay. Does it not? Like you know what I mean, right? It's like it's it's trying to be like a foot. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, I'm no. That's fine. I'm just thinking because it's like with Migna, I wouldn't assume that that's a heavy foot. In fact, the me is heavier. It 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 is. No, the whole thing, the whole word is a foot. No, the the. You understand? Like this, the the two syllables together that makes the foot, right? What oh, word are we ending? The accusative is a certain attempt to end the word with a foot that has at least one heavy syllable. Right? What word are we ending? Um, no, this is this is to take care of in case we have words that are longer than th than two syllables. Oh, okay. 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 I mean, it works. Like you see, don't, like every single one of these mm -hmm. is is a foot, and they all have at least one heavy syllable. Yes. So you're right. You're right. So there's at least one heavy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, I'm just gonna kind of leave this note in here. Not um, not this, because we've taken care of that, but I'm gonna leave this note in here about the case, but this is the important part. Okay, so, um, and by the way, yeah, I'll come up with a way to write this, just with, we actually can write this very simply, like a romanization, right? Just the, the capital R becomes a regular R, and mm -hmm. um, the H with the line becomes a regular H, right? Otherwise, yeah, yeah it's just straightforward. We can keep, um, the schwa uh, in the romanization since, you know, this isn't super forward-facing anyway. Interesting. Or are we ever going to have the letter E, and if we're not, we could just use the letter E? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. That would be a shame, but, you know. I mean, I, I just don't know you to use anything that that is not in sort of the standardized <laughs> alphabet type thing <laughs> no i know i know okay all right so then let's uh okay so now that we've got this let's come up with a name for the reindeer language oh thank you il silver il silver tail um you're missing an a between is and sincere the accusative is a sincere attempt. I can fix it. I'm sorry. I see it. I don't know why I like read it to you and I expect you to fix it, but now you're there. So yep. I won't. Okay. Attempt is a mass noun. Oh, silver. <laughs> silver. <laughs> yes. It's a, I can just call you silver. Thank you. Um, you're right. Attempt is definitely a mass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a whole attempt. Okay, so what, what can we call this language? What is a good name for it? Uh, <laughs> something with reindeer in it. Yeah. Um, that's what they call themselves. Um, I mean, we could do like, obviously we could get, create a word for tongue if we mm -hmm. want to go that route. Um, what if we, we have, what if we just turned the, Relative of the plural of reindeer into the... Like, right? Because it would essentially be like, out of the reindeer. Of the reindeer. 
So what's our allative? Okay, so we gotta we gotta we gotta figure that out. All right. So it is uh, if something's being drawn out, it is affected. So it, we're we're so we're all, we're already with mimigna. Um, mimigna, and then what um, what draws out? What pulls out? What verb gives us the elative function to remove to? Suck. I know that was the first thing I thought of, but I think. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, like pool. Um. Oh. Yeah. No, let's don't overthink it. Pool. Pool. Okay. All right. So um, we'll do. Affected. Pool. Mm -hmm. Is elative. All right, so we have, this is just notes, I'll, I'll delete this. Mimigna, and then mimigna, and then something that's a verbal root that could, that will be bigger when it's used as an actual verb, but can shrink up a little bit. Right. And we already have a lot of nasals in there, so let's stay away from nasals, unless they're going to get deleted. I have an idea. What if we had a verbal root that was something like this? We haven't even decided what we're going to do with verbs yet, but if that thing gets suffixized... I have to get back down to where you are. Okay. <gasps> Mimi Nux. Mimi Nux. Mimi Nux. Mimi Nux. Oh, I like that. I certainly like the way it looks. Um, if you can't pronounce it super well, we could do something different. Jasmine um, says yes. Oh, no. I'll, I need to learn how to do these things. It's really okay. Mimi Nux. Where would the stress be? First syllable. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mimi Nux. Mimi Nux. Okay. I'm getting there. I like it. You sure? Do you not like it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, good. Then we're fine. So you sure? You sure you're yeah. okay with it? Why wouldn't I be okay with it? I don't know. I'm just asking. Here, let's... I'll, I'll save this note so we know. Alright. We ready to do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The most exciting part of... the change. There we are. Oh, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That's nice. Oh, that is good stuff. Mm. I like that. Oh my gosh, and now we still have 16 minutes to like... I told you we'd be fine. Told you we'd be alright. <laughs> um... I mean, yeah. I feel like we need a pat on the back. We're we're impressive today. <laughs> <laughs> Things, I mean, this like a lot of this stuff could be fleshed out a little bit, but um, I think I actually will go through and like I'll I'll write up the romanization system after we're done because we know what it's going to be. Very simple. Um, to the extent that we have some of these uh, sound changes happening, we've written them elsewhere, even if they're not in our big sound change document. Nouns are all set. Um, adjectives are all set. Uh, let's just say, uh, let's see this. Uh, occur. Uh, are, let me just stand before the nouns they demonstrate. <laughs> um, Let's leave verbs for the time being. Let's talk about compounds or naming strategies. What, well, actually, what do you want to do? Do you want to talk about compounds or naming strategies? 
Um, um, I don't know. I feel like compounds could lead to naming strategies. Yeah, I, I agree. So I think we need to tackle compounds first. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, oh. You should be sorry. I have no idea what you're sorry for, but you should be. Yep. Everybody knows it. Okay, here we go. Three knocks. Um, okay, so... Uh, uh, makes use of... Okay. Uh, uh, how do I like to tab this? Uh, how do you like to tab it? Yeah, like, this feels weird. It feels like it should be indented or something. Um, yeah. Uh, two downs. No, it's it goes on the left after you have bullet points. That's what you have elsewhere in the document. Let's just do this. Unless it's a, unless you're doing more bullet points, then they get tabbed down. Show rulers. Show layout. Show rulers. Where are the rulers? Show Can't ruler. You just do command R. I don't know. Can you? Never tried Do it. Command R. See if you can. <gasps> Woo! Look at that. You're welcome. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> and now you're gonna break pages. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, we're, obviously, verbs are a thing that are supposed to happen, but we're skipping them right now. We're just focusing on nouns, darn it. We know our verbs are going to do stuff. We kind of talked about them a little bit. And in 12 minutes, what are we going to do with it anyway? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we can, probably similar phonological stuff is going to happen. Um, okay, so... Um, Let's think of some compounds. Yes. Should we use the words we already have? Uh, we can, but we don't have to. Just like, uh, think about in English, what are some things that might get compounded? Like, you know, the winter horn, for example. You... Wait, why not like winter fur? Because wouldn't they get like... Oh, I was, I was immediately winter thinking fur. of, you know, the, the horn of winter, the, the horn that's, that's blasted to let people know that winter is coming, or winter has come, and then they have to get ready for battle as they battle the forces of winter, you know, every year. That's what I was thinking. Every year. But yeah, winter fur, that makes sense too. Okay, so um, <laughs> here, uh, so uh, the two nouns can stand in a variety of relationships. Um, as a side note, people really wanted more verbs. <laughs> Why? Who cares? <laughs> okay. Oh, Silver, that's a good question because I know that deer shed their antlers. I don't know about reindeer, though. And I know reindeer antlers, I believe, are actually more covered than... I'm looking that up. Okay. Oh my gosh, like Google already knew I wanted to search it. I'm pretty sure they were listening to me. Hmm. Oh. Both male and female reindeer have antlers. Oh. Males drop their antlers in November, but females keep their antlers through the winter until their calves are born in May. Wow. So the so it's the it's the it's it's the female reindeer that are the warriors that have to battle the forces of winter. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yes. Ah, amazing. Okay. Um, oh, man. And now it makes me want to have a compound for antler keeper, but then that would require us to go to verbs. Verbs, yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's, let's start with something simple, like winter antler, for example, because that's, that could be a different type of thing. Uh, because only females would have antlers in the winter. Yes, exactly. Which means all of Santa's reindeer are female. Wow. Um. <laughs> have we talked about Rudolph, like the proclamation Rudolph? 
I think I feel like we have. Yes, we have, and I have seen it. Yes. Yes, but and we had talked about why when I was a kid I didn't really like the whole claymation thing, which is why I never watched California Raisins. Yeah, I mean that's probably not the only that reason, one. but <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe there is more. <laughs> Let the kid be a dentist. I don't get it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. Winter Antler. Okay. He's an elf. Was he a kid? He was an elf. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so, uh, t- t- uh, I mean, I, I think of him as a kid because he's clearly not, he's clearly not adult enough to be able to handle most anything. Or but at he least was getting a job. By the end of it, in the beginning, he was just a wannabe dentist. Goodness gracious. So in 30 minutes, he grew up. He was obviously going to dentist school or something. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want him working in my teeth, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. It's true. So Rudolf is our word for antler. We don't have a word for winter. Um Wait, why use winter? Why not snow or ice or something? Oh, <gasps> oh which one do you like better? Um so uh Zaga is ice. Um um, and then hoofum is snow. I think I would actually do snow because in general, the ice is going to last longer than the snow. Because huh. it's underneath. Oh, oh. Hmm. All right. Right? Take your word for that. Because the snow will turn to ice as it melts and then freezes and melts and freezes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And so like spring, you could still get spring ice. And you're not going to have really that much snow left over by that point. Wow. I mean, you're just telling me new information, obviously. I mean, we're having the coldest day of the year outside, and it's like 65. Uh, <laughs> Hence the need for a sweater. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it actually was. It was a little chilly inside the house. So I wasn't disappointed mm. to be able to put on a lovely sweater. Um, I feel a lot better. I may keep it on. All right, so, hufum, hufum, hold off. This obviously can be where we stop for um, compounds. Like, you can just put the two words like that. Do you have any thoughts? I do have thoughts. Because this is is how the genitival construction would work. What's going to take us from just a genitival construction to a compound here? What would take us there is reduction of some sort. Yeah. And I feel, okay, so take away the feel. Mm -hmm. The reduction needs to come in between the two. Okay. Um, One thing is this. Hold off. That's an easy one. Really? Really, I'm. I don't know why I keep staring. Oh, okay. Uh, however, Dark Horse has an interesting idea. Uh, and I want to try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give three options here. So this was my initial suggestion. Uh, this is Dark Horse's suggestion, and this is a combination of both of them. This is something I did in High Valyrian, uh, where there would be some sort of uh, like phonological alternation that was triggered by a consonant that was then deleted. Okay, one more. Oh my god. What have you done? And, and of course, you know what, but you know what, what's going to happen, right? Via our rules. The F stays F. Um, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so be hoof brudaf. Hoof brudaf. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we call this, uh... Hold on. 
No, we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> but at least it's in the right font. There. A, B, C, or D. What do people like? Yeah, why is that one in the right font? Yeah, right? I literally, I was, I gave up on the other one. Mm. That'll be a post stream. Try to figure it out. Okay, Jasmine and Wesley both picked D, but Mateus went A. Got two for C Magi now. Bibliridian are going C. Hufum Holdoff. Hufu Holdoff. Hufu Brodoff. Hufu Hufu Brodoff. Um, okay. I believe C is winning currently, because then as he was pronouncing yeah. those, we got like a string of C's in from Stuhlbackery, Tim, Voraz, Linguist and Erba says B, and then Jacob came back with C, and now we're getting D's. Yeah, now we're getting D's. Count the C's, will you? Yeah. Okay, I know how many D's have been said. Got it. Seven. Okay, there are seven Ds. Seven Cs. <laughs> You're kidding. No. <laughs> Do you have a vote, David? I. Well, I mean, <laughs> I created C and you created D. <laughs> <laughs> Logan just voted oh, D. So oh, oh, Robert, Robert just voted D. D. No, 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 it's eight to eight. <laughs> okay. Hoof glued off. Hoof glued off. It's still eight to eight. It's still eight to eight. Hoof glued off. Hoof glued off. Hoof glued off. Oh. Wait, did Linguista and Ever just change a boat? Yep. Linguista and Ever just changed the boat to C. Ooh. Okay. So All we're right. going C. Okay. We'll, we'll call it there before someone else can come back with a D. It's done. Oh, and Mateus is switching to C. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's okay. I love you all still. <laughs> <laughs> you ever listen to nice. Ozzy Osbourne very much? No. Okay. I. Uh, that's that's a that's a conversation for another day. Think? Just, uh, okay, so then let's, um, okay, uh, uh, let's see now, let's go, uh, the most, okay, the most basic, uh, compound is simply putting the, uh, Two nouns together, the first modifying the second in a basic genitival sense. Ooh, bye Jasmine, have fun doing all your Christmas things, and Ray. Evan, hello! My... Well, Evan, we are like wrapping up on our yeah. traveling sketch for reindeer. <laughs> um, when the and two, uh, uh, two consonants. Oh, and I think Jasmine just said goodbye in Shenya. I believe oh. I recognize that from one of her videos. The ho oh, I believe that means goodbye. Nice. Ha, <laughs> rapping. <laughs> I'm gonna put a bow on this one. All right. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, some phonological stuff happens. And uh, a consonant is deleted if there is ever an instance of three consonants coming in a row. I shown below. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's officially 4 p.m. What do we want to do? <laughs> We've. We got it. We got a name. We got a name for our for our our, our language. We got at least uh, one method of compounding done. We have 
noun number. We have cases. Um, we we are we have we're gonna get a romanization that I can get really quick. What do you think? Do we want to do we want to be grammar with this? <laughs> Does that mean cool? We're done. Yeah. Okay, just checking. Um, and also, Dark Horse. Next week we're doing a different language sketch. This time for penguins. That's right, penguins <laughs> next week. Oh, yes. Fancy little fellows. I can't wait. Fancy little tuxedos. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's what we're doing next week, and then after that we'll get back to possums. Yep. We will get back to them. Um. But yeah, I I think that what we have is is good. I don't know that we can actually like tackle something brand new. So yeah. I mean, otherwise we're just going to keep going forever. Um, and yeah, I think this is, I mean, this is what a language sketch is. Like we have a way to yeah. create compounds, which would in effect give us a way to start thinking personal names and place names. Um, oh. Yeah. And I'm gonna, hold on a sec, since it didn't change there. There we go. <gasps> How rude. Nice. Okay. It is nice. All right. Well then, cool. Uh, oh, oh, uh, and it's Christmas Eve, so uh, you know. Yes. For those that celebrate, Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Otherwise, happy you know, December twenty fifth tomorrow. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> there you go. That's how we do it. And uh, and yeah. But otherwise, thanks for joining us. We'll have another fun sketch next week. And uh, stay grammar. Yeah. Stay grammar. Bye, Brian. Bye. I just out a couple syllables in that <laughs> <laughs> or one